Good evening, everyone. I now call the meeting of the Hampton City School Board to order. Ms. Bowers, would you please call the roll? Ms. Safanja? Here. Ms. Banks Gray? Here. Ms. Cherry? Here. Mr. Kilgore? Here. Mr. Samuels? Present. Dr. Woodhouse? Here. Dr. Mason? Here. Let the record reflect that all board members are present. And at this time, I will turn our meeting over to our student representative, Vicki. Thank you, Chair Mason. So today we have Dominic Greenwood, a fifth grader from Barron Fundamental Elementary School. And today he's gonna lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Dominic. So I hear today you brought a piece of poem with us, with you today, and can you share that with us today? Yes. This poem is by Paul Cookson, Let No One Steal Your Dreams. Let no one steal your dreams, let no one tear apart the burning of ambition that fires the drive inside your heart. Let no one steal your dreams. Let no one tell you that you can't. Let no one hold you back. Let no one tell you that you won't. Set your sights and keep them fixed. Set your sights on high. Let no one steal your dreams. Your only limit is the sky. Let no one steal your dreams. Follow your heart, follow your soul. For only when you follow them will you feel truly whole. Set your sights and keep them fixed. Set your sights on high. Let no one steal your dreams. Your only limit is the sky. Thank you, Dominic. Thank you, Dominic, for that wonderful message. And I think all of us here need to remember that and hear that we always need to have a dream in our mind in order to keep us inspirational and allow us to be successful in life. So now I have some questions for you. So can I ask what's your favorite subject at school? My favorite subject is science. Why is science your favorite subject? Because you get to do experiments and <laughs> it's very like unique from other subjects. I know that's, that's very true. Science is very hands-on and allows you to perform many different types of experiments. So can I ask during your free time, do you have any types of hobbies? I play baseball and I like to play video games and read and play with my dogs. I think, I think everyone here, when they were young, I'm sure everybody loved to play video games during your age. Thank you, Dominic. And um, today, can you tell us who you brought here with you? I have my mom, I mean my dad, Daniel Greenwood. My mom, Chelsea Greenwood. My grandma, Juanita Greenwood. My sister, Dahlia Greenwood. And my other sister, Danny. And can you guys please stand to be recognized? Thank you, and now I'll pass it back to Chair Mason. Well, thank you so much for sharing him with us tonight, but also I see we have your administrator here with us as well. And any other family members here with him as well? Stand up to be recognized. We have to know who the village is. This is, this is our village. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. All right. At this time, the chair will entertain a motion to adopt tonight's agenda. Mr. Chair, move approval of the agenda as presented. Second. Second. All right. It's been properly motioned by uh, Mr. Kilgore and seconded by what's that? you, Dr. Woodhouse. Yes. Dr. Woodhouse, thank you very much. I was turning, I couldn't tell it was Mr. Samuels or Woodhouse right. down that end. Dr. Woodhouse. All right. Any discussion? <laughs> Ms. Bowser, please call for the vote. Ms. Safanja? Aye. Ms. Banks Gray? Aye. Ms. Cherry? Aye. Mr. Kilgore? Aye. Mr. Samuels? Aye. Dr. Woodhouse? Aye. Dr. Mason? Aye. Motion carries. At this time, I would also like to recognize we do have. Uh, Dele oh, there he is, Dennett. Delegate A.C. Cardoza here with us this evening as well. So welcome, Delegate Cardoza. <laughs> and I have you down to speak during public comment period. That's how I knew you were here. I didn't see you, but I, I saw the piece of paper. All right. 
All right. Now, at this time, I would also like to uh, recognize Ms. Cherry, um, Vice Chair, for a special presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The school board recently held a, a very interesting retreat. And um, as part of that, the theme was, what's your superpower? The chair thought it was important that we as board members reach out and find out what those individual abilities we have that go beyond just being board members to further enhance everything in Hampton City Schools. You know, as a board, we have a collective strength. But individually, it was felt that we need to use our superpowers to make changes in the school division. And the key one was how to encourage our teachers. Our teachers have done so much to get us to exactly where we are today. It's no small accomplishment because our teachers are the backbone of this school division. So several of us reached out and held various community events. We took time away from our homes and our jobs to do what we wanted to do. Uh, Ms. Banks Gray had a wonderful event. Um, we had an event, Ms. Dr. Mason and one of our veteran teachers, who you'll hear from later, had a wonderful event that benefited our teachers in Hampton City Schools. And we asked, if you weren't there, we asked PEG TV to put together just a little video to show you the difference that we made using our superpowers. Take it away, Andy. Thank you. Now, the, some of the pictures were from our teach, Tissues for Teachers event, and Ms. Um, Johnson will explain how that even came about, but you also saw pictures from an outstanding first-time event dealt with by our school board uh, member, Tina Banks Gray. So Ms. Banks Gray, would you please expand on the um, community support you received for your event? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Vice, uh, Vice Mayor, um, Vice Mayor, Vice Ma <laughs> Madam Vice uh, Chair. Um, getting excited just looking at all those <laughs> pictures. But y'all, if you didn't get an opportunity to go to both of the events, they are both absolutely amazing. The uh, Tissue for Teachers, and um, we actually had our first annual Teachers Are the Best drive through Giveaway just to honor our teachers and just show them some love and helping them prepare for the new year. Um, for school and in partnership with C3 Church that's here in Hampton. We had some amazing community partners and we gave anyway things from gift cards to Starbucks gift cards to um, Visa vanilla gift cards to all kind of school supplies and just the the, the gratification and the the um, 
the appreciation from the teachers were just absolutely overwhelming. We actually have some teachers that, that drove by and they were actually emotional just by um, the showing of love that we gave them. Um, like I said, we had some amazing community partners that came out and supported this, was so willing to support um, this particular event and we had great press coverage. We are looking so forward to honoring our teachers again next year. We had over 400 teachers come through and we just want to continue to thank them and honor them um, for sowing seeds of greatness in our young people. They are truly our unsung heroes and we honor them. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Ms. Banks Gray. And I can tell you, I also supported Ms. Banks Gray event and it was quite emotional. It was a, a great piece to see our teachers come through. Mr. Samuels was there as well, Dr. Mason, to see our teachers come through and be so appreciative of what was done for them. With our Tishes for Teachers event, um, the, the good piece about that is that the community came together to take care of some needs our teachers had. And we partnered with Kroger for the second year, but I, I can't say it better than veteran teacher Michelle Johnson. She's the one who helped spearhead this from the very beginning, and I'd like to call on her now, Ms. Johnson. She's a veteran teacher at Moton Early Childhood Center. Good evening, everyone. Again, my name is Michelle Johnson. I'm a teacher at the best school in Hampton, Moton Early Childhood Center, where our youngest learners soar. Um, teachers for Tissues for Teachers actually started with me having a conversation with Miss Ann Stevens Cherry, and I was just sharing with her. Um, I was buying a lot of tissue for my classroom, to be honest. Um, the students were sick. It was cold and flu season, and we now know it was also COVID, the start of COVID. Um, and so she shared with me, how can we? What can we do to? help the teachers in the classroom. And we were sitting there brainstorming and we came up with, I don't know how we even came up with the, the title of it, but she said, Tissues for Teachers. I like that, Tissues for Teachers. And that's what we did. Again, we partnered with Kroger and we had so much support from parents, our families and friends. Um, and so it's an initiative to provide teachers with tissues, hand sanitizers, disinfectant sprays and wipes just to maintain healthy classrooms. Um, and we see, received so much support at our second event that we were able to fill one van from top to bottom. And so um, I just wanna say thank you to parents, um, community members, Kroger, great staff, my family and friends, they're here tonight to support me. Um, and thank you to the school board for continuously supporting teachers. We appreciate you and happy World Teacher Day to the teachers. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. And we also want to. Turn your mic on. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. And we also want to acknowledge the departments in Hampton City Schools that helped out so much. Peg TV, Andy with the van, um, Marty's people um, in, in print and shop, um, Ms. Goal in in public relations, everybody just, especially when they saw how many tissues and paper towels and disinfectant there were, they could not believe how many, how many um, carts we filled up. Could they, Ms. Banks? Great, could not believe it. And for people like, as you saw in the video, the sheriff of Hampton to come out and participate, the police chief of Hampton to come out and participate, many of our city council members. Mm -hmm. I just wanna say that's their way of showing love for the teachers in Hampton City Schools. So we thank everybody for their support. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely awesome. I'll tell you, I had the opportunity to support both events. And one of the things that I can say is that we have a community who loves our children, who loves our school division. And that says a lot about who we are as a community and as a city. Talking to some of my other colleagues in other areas of the state, they envy what we have here in Hampton in terms of the relationship that this school board has with the city council, in addition to what we do with our community partners. They're watching us. They're taking a look at what we do. So kudos to Hampton for all that you're doing to help move our school division forward because in the end, our children are the true winners of our kindness. So thank you. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Chair, if I could say one more thing. Mm -hmm. We were so excited, I called Ms. Goral and I said, you would not believe just what happened. We had two teachers come up 
from York County Public Schools, mm -hmm. and they contributed because they said, this is what they said, we teachers all have to stick together. Yes. So that's the kind of excitement we had that day. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other comments from other board members? All right. So at this time, we'll move on to um, additional recognitions, and I'll turn it over to Ms. Goral. Well, thank you, Chair Mason, Vice Chair Cherry, members of our school board, Superintendent Dr. Smith, members of our Hampton City Schools family. And then I'm gonna ask at this time, actually, if Dr. Woodhouse, would you please proceed to the microphone on the stage to assist with tonight's recognitions? And we do have a very good recognition tonight. It's hard to follow what just was shown here, especially when it's all that support for our teachers. But we've got some community partners here that are partnering with us in support of our students and teachers. So very excited. So our one recognition this evening not only shines light on the national award that was received this past August, but also shows that collaboration and partnership among several groups. So at this time, with the following individuals, please join me up front on either side of the podium. From the James River Association, we've got Nat Draper, the Director of Education, Katie Farrell, Lower James Education Manager, James Abbott, Senior Environmental Educator, and Lane McCann, Environmental Educator. See, Nat and Katie have seen me on a boat, so I don't yes. usually look like this, so they're a little surprised. <laughs> From the National Park Service, Chesapeake, representing Brittany Hall, um, Mr. Aaron G. Firth, our park ranger from Fort Monroe National Monument. Come down and join us, sir. We also have Shored Up LLC owners Claire Newbert and Linda Hamm, if you would join us down front. Yes, right here. And last but not least, from our HCS Science Department, we have Dr. Janice Richeson, who is our curriculum leader, Ms. Shannon Pullman, as well as Heather Van Hoot and Wendy Christ, who are two of our HCS fifth grade rock star science teachers. I told you we've got a large group here. So let me tell you why they're here tonight. So this fantastic group of people are here this evening because on Wednesday, August the 24th, a team of representatives from the National Park Service Chesapeake office, also known as NPS Chesapeake, Hampton City Schools, and Dr. Caggiano actually joined that team in August when they went up to DC, and the James River Association accepted the prestigious Excellence in Education Award, which was presented by the National Park Service, NPS, at the Department of Interior, Maine, Interior Building in Washington, DC. So this is the inaugural year of the NPS Excellence in Education Award. It was created by the National Park Service to acknowledge and honor NPS educators who have made outstanding contributions to the profession of education. The award recognizes innovation and it also within the education program planning, development, and implementation. This year, the Excellence in Education Award honored those who met the needs of teachers and students during the many educational challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic. NPS received nominations for the award and selected seven teams from across the country to receive the honor. HCS, JRA, and NPS Chesapeake are the recipients of this award for both, now this is the big part, not just for the region, for NPS Region 1, Northeast Region. They were the national NPS Excellent in Education Award winners. I think that gets a big round of applause. So this award recognizes that collaborative effort of all of these individuals and more and our local partners at the city level to connect every fifth grade student in the Hampton City School Division with meaningful watershed educational experiences. And if that's a mouthful, they call it MeWees. Did I say that correct? MeWees, there we go. I've learned a lot being out with these folks for the last few months. So the National Park Foundation provided funding for the program in September of 2021, so last school year, and approximately 
1,500 fifth grade students and 65 fifth grade teachers participated in four events throughout the course of the school year, including a professional development day for teachers, virtual lessons about the cultural and historical significance of Fort Monroe National Monument, and boat trips on the Hampton River and the James River with a site visit to Fort Monroe led by our local partner, Short Up LLC. These lessons included a special focus on uplifting stories of African Americans in the Chesapeake Bay region, as students learned how the Africans who arrived enslaved in 1619 contributed to the developing nation with unique abilities originally learned in their homeland. Students ended the school year with a stewardship action project called Paint Out Pollution, centered around reducing pollution to our waterways from stormwater runoff. So these experiences provided students with the skills, understanding and knowledge needed to become environmental and community stewards. The opportunities and lessons learned throughout last school year will help our students make well-informed environmental choices that are key to sustaining the health of the Chesapeake Bay watershed. And that was a lot, and I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Woodhouse because he's got more to share. Would you all please join me on stage? Thank you. Before I present each of these organizations a certificate of recognition, let me share a bit more about the exceptional partnership. The partnership between the Hampton City School Science Department, the James River Association, the National Park Services of Chesapeake, and the Shored Up Incorporation is continuing this year, this school year's program again including professional development for fifth grade teachers and meaningful experiences for every fifth grade student in the division including field trips and environmental education uh, conducted as part of the JRA's floating classroom the long view the Ann Warrell education program as well as both environmental and historical education on site at Fort Monroe National Monument. It is very exciting that you all have been recognized nationally for this program and are continuing in this year for our fifth grade teachers and students. On behalf of our chair, Dr. Mason, the members of the school board, and our superintendent, Dr. Smith, please accept this certificate of recognition for this outstanding accomplishment. Let me read each one of these certificates, one after another. Congratulations, this certificate is proudly presented to Shored Up National Park Service Excellence in Education Award. Will someone come to receive this certificate? Thank you. Let's bump fists. Congratulations, this certificate is proudly presented to the National Park Service Chesapeake Office, National Park Service Excellence in Education Award. Would someone please come? Uh, <laughs> certificate, this uh, certificate this certificate is proudly presented to the HCS Science Department, that's Hampton City School Science Department, for this National Park Service Excellence in Education Award. Thank you. All right. Last but not least, congratulations. This certificate is proudly presented to James River Association, this National Park Service Excellence in Education Award. <laughs> Thank you. Would uh, anyone from any of the organizations at this time want to have anything to say?
Um, I just wanted to, as from the James River Association, I just wanted to thank Hampton City Schools for your leadership and, uh, you know, not only were we able to do all these trips last year, but we were able to get funding for, for this year as well, which is great for the National Park, um, uh, National Park um, system in Chesapeake office. Uh, we consider it a pleasure to get kids outside and do hands-on science and, and try to make it as engaging as Dominic spoke earlier about his engagement at school as well. Um, but we uh, also really want to try to connect our science to the SOLs. We know that there's lots of pressure and, and, and to continue to have those uh, goals and standards. And so we just consider ourselves very lucky to be a part of, um, of this participation with you all. We work with 20 different school systems in Virginia. And uh, I know I'm being recorded here, but uh, Hampton is one of our favorites. <laughs> you can say that a little louder because you are being recorded. <laughs> Anyone from Shore? Anyone else? Well, I really am um, just thrilled to be here with Linda uh, representing Shore Up because we were so grateful to be part of this project and really grateful to be a part of teaching the next generation. That's true, especially since we had kids that went through Hampton City Schools, and now I have a grandchild in Hampton City Schools. So, um, you know, it's personal for us. And so thank you for having us. Thank you for allowing us to pass along the unique story that Hampton has to tell when it comes to our um, heritage, especially with our ethnic watermen and our beloved oysters and, and seafood industry here in Hampton. So thank you. Mr. Firth, would you like to say a few words? Can't follow them. You can't follow them. <laughs> All right, before the honorees uh, return to their seats, we would like to recognize anyone who came along with them, family members, staff members, or any guests in our audience. Would you please stand? No. All right. Okay, truly we thank you for your participating in the program. Thank you so much. Thank you all. And as you're returning to your seats, I do have one question for Dominic. You are in fifth grade. Have you gone out on the on the boat yet? No. Ah. Next week. Next week. Next week. So exciting. See you next week. So again, you know, it's really exciting because this was last year, but this is now blending into this year and it's based off of funding from the National Park Service, which if, correct me if I'm wrong, it was $64,000, almost $75,000. So, and Chair Mason, even though Ms. Cherry's saying don't leave yet, because I know she wants to say something that concludes my part of the recognition. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ms. Cole. Comments from board members? I'll go to Ms. Cherry first. <laughs> Thank you. I was chomping at the bit. This is so exciting. And, you know, you get accolades and awards all the time, but when you have those kind of situations where it actually benefits children, that's exceptionally exciting. Um, one thing I heard that just jumped to me was meaningful experiences. And she's going to kill me for saying it, but when you saw the veteran teacher, Michelle Johnson, up here, she's a rock star teacher. She's one of our rock star teachers. And she provides those meaningful experiences, so much so that I, I believe Dr. Smith, you and Dr. Caggiano visited her classroom to just see some of the experiences she was providing our, our children. So what you all are doing, you are staying right on course. And I know that's a term which shored up. So I just want to thank all of you all for everything you're doing because this is where we live. We are on the estuary of greatness because of you. So thanks again. Mm -hmm. Yes. Other board members? All right. Thank you very much. And at this time, I know that some of you would like to go ahead and head on out and enjoy the rest of your evening. So we'll pause for a minute to allow you to do that. Dominic, thank you so much. And thank you all once again for sharing him with us tonight. <laughs> Thank 
Okay. All right, continuing tonight's agenda, item number three, the consent agenda. Is there a motion? Mr. Chair, I make the motion to approve the tonight's agenda as presented. Second. All right, it's been properly moved by Dr. Woodhouse and that we accept tonight's consent agenda and seconded by Ms. Afonja. Any discussion? Ms. Bowers, please call for the vote. Ms. Banks Gray? Aye. Ms. Cherry? Aye. Mr. Kilgore? Aye. Mr. Samuels? Aye. Dr. Woodhouse? Aye. Ms. Afonja? Aye. Dr. Mason? Aye. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is the superintendent and staff report. Dr. Smith? Thank you, Mr. Chair and Vice Chair and members of the school board. It is my pleasure uh, to start um, this evening in terms of the superintendent and staff report uh, with the WHRO annual impact statement. And uh, we are delighted to have the executive with us, Mr. Bert Schmidt. Um, and I know he will introduce a colleague uh, as well as part of this particular presentation. So I'll turn it over to you now. And let me just say one final or additional comment. I know that uh, we have Ms. Stephanie Jackson Afonja, uh, who serves as a member from the Hampton City School Board on the Educational Advisory Board. And so I want to acknowledge that as well and, uh, and, and to acknowledge your leadership with WHRO in that capacity. Thank you so much. Chairman Mason, uh, Dr. Smith, members of the board, thank you for allowing me to speak with you tonight. My name is Bert Schmidt. I'm the president and CEO of WHRO. With me is Elmer Seward. He's my vice president for education. So if you have the hard questions, look that way. Um, we provide you, oh, before we get started, I'm here tonight because you're one of 21 divisions that literally own the license WHRO. We're the only public media country, uh, station in the country owned by collaboration of schools. But more importantly, you're one of the two school divisions that founded WHRO back in 1961. I hope you know that history. This body, when, when uh, Hunter B. Andrews was the chair, worked with Norfolk and created Homeroom One, which became ultimately WHRO. So thank you for the history of the work of, of this group. So we provided you an impact statement. You've got, I believe, hard copies. I'm not going to go through all those details, but you have, you can see the geography of the, of the divisions that literally own the license and we go out and speak to all of them. But I want to just give some highlights to this report uh, that, that you've been given. First off, looking at page two is our, our discussion around eMedia VA. eMedia VA is a digital repository of learning objects. We work with national organizations like the Smithsonian, National Archives, Library of Congress, more importantly with Virginia organizations, nonprofits, universities, historical associations and the like. And we collect digital content. It could be a video, audio game, lesson plan, whatever it may be. It's all correlates to the Virginia standards of learning and it's all free for all your students, for your teachers, for your parents. We have a contract with the Department of Education we've had for about 10 years now. And so this is available free to charge to every public, private, and homeschooler in Virginia. As you can imagine, in the last couple of years, with digital learning is what it's been. The eMedia VA was used over 2 million times this past year. So it's been a, a real great service. And actually requested by the superintendents about a decade ago, they were looking for this service. So uh, we're very uh, pleased to be able to bring this service statewide. And we have all sorts of trainings available. We can come out to the division or they can come to the station. Lots of training for, for teachers or, or administrators to learn how to use eMedia VA. Um, we do a lot of professional development for uh, our divisions. You can see over a thousand teachers from around the Commonwealth uh, received a, a variety of professional development that we summarize on page three, but uh, we do a, a, a professional development around cultural competency, African American history, um, uh, all sorts of educational, professional development, even workforce. So there's a lot in this space. And of course, as, as Dr. Smith knows, if there's ever a need, he just picks up the phone, calls me, and we can, we can make any sort of professional development available to you. Now, one of the highlights of school, the things schools really care about are the courses we have developed for you. These are online, highly interactive courses. You can see the long list. I'm not going to read through the whole thing for you. They're mostly high school courses. There are a few uh, middle school courses interspersed in there, but mostly high school. And again, during COVID, we were used quite a bit. But again, the schools came to WHRO about 15 years ago and said virtual learning is going to be a thing. 
We don't know how much of a thing it's going to be, but it's too expensive to do on our own. Let's bring all the schools together and do it through WHRO. So we have a big team that creates these courses in-house, working with uh, content partners from around the region. Um, we are in, uh, we just, in fact, here we go. Uh, when we make these courses, we now know to work with students, to make sure the courses are built in a way that excites them, that gets them turned on, that gets them wanting to take the course. And so we have a student advisory board. They come together periodically to work with our team to make sure that these courses are built in a way that is engaging, as fun as courses can be, for, uh, for, for these kids. Um, as you uh, may know, we pr produced the state's first African-American history course a couple of years ago. This is now available to everybody throughout the state. Um, we also, oh, I went a little fast. We also, I sh it's not on the screen here, but we are in the process of, because I see so much uh, environmental stuff here, we're in the process of creating the, the, first, the state's first environmental science course. We expect that course to be available next August. So we're in the process right now of, uh, we've got the curriculum all set, we've got content folks, and now we're just actually in the production process. Both a video course, which is literally every class that you would take throughout the year that's available on demand, as well as the, this interactive course. And if you go through the whole course, you would, you'd be able to get credit if the division decides you wanna do that. Again, these courses we manufacture and then we give them to you. They're in your learning management system under your policies using your teachers. So they're all your policies. You can modify the courses however you want. You can change the order, add, subtract things, but we build the base course for you and then give them to you. Now, for the 21 school divisions, they get these courses for free. For the other 110 whatever school divisions that don't own us, they pay $10,000 per course those courses and a lot of school divisions around the state use these so you're getting that um, as being an owner of WHR. I want to show this quick video. With an entertaining show, a colorful van, interesting lessons, and engaging interactives and games, the WHRO environmental van experience is much more than a great collaboration with the Virginia Stage Company. It is a highly immersive and memorable way for students to become the environmental stewards of tomorrow. So we're doing a lot, a lot in the world of uh, environmental education. Jane Batten gave us a $3 million gift a few years back to create these green beat videos. You saw a little glimpse of that. We've got now an environmental van. I'll talk more about that in a little bit. We've got these interactive experiences with the iPads and we bring it all together. In fact, that video we had put together I'd like to say for you folks, but actually we got we received a national award a couple of weeks ago uh, at the National Educational Telecommunications Association as the top in, in, innovative uh, activity in public media. So we we're very thrilled to get that national award. And that whole activity is available to the division with one phone call. Call us up and we'll have the whole folks come out with the, with the program. Uh, on page seven, we love to support uh, kids and smart kids. So we have a number of contests. We have our PBS Kids Writers can contest, kids uh, K through five, they write and illustrate stories, send them into the judges, we judge them. We actually create a TV show out of them where we bring the winners in, they read their stories, we animate their, their, their stories that they've drawn and it's a whole thing with, with the kids. We have, of course, for the 15th year in a row, the, the WHRO Spelling Bee, uh, kids from around the region. These are middle school kids, uh, six through eight, come together for the Spelling Bee. If you haven't seen it, it's a very exciting, if you, if you, I'm a sports fan, it's, it's exciting. And the winner goes to the National Spelling Bee. And so um, uh, hopefully you'll be well represented in this year's bee that will be back in a studio finally after a couple of years of virtual spelling bees, which aren't nearly as fun. Also, some of you are young enough, you may have participated yourself in the Great Computer Challenge. These are uh, competitions really K through 12. We have a junior and senior divisions. Kids come together in teams and they compete uh, at a weekend in ODU. Uh, competing with various software programs and packages, and we have these huge trophies we give out at the end of the competition. And we get, you get, these kids get a chance to spend kind of a weekend uh, on campus. Many of them have never spent time on a college campus, so they get to see what it's like to be there, maybe think about college as an opportunity for them. So it's a very exciting event. I will mention in your packet, uh, it's not on the slide here, it's unique to, uh, to Hampton City Schools, but on page nine, over the summer we had actually three groups of 20 rising ninth graders that came to WHRO doing stu student career exploration. And they got to see what 
TV and radio is all about. And they spent the day in the building. They got to meet our folks in our newsroom. They got to see behind the scenes in the TV stations, the radio stations. So really immersed in a world that they may not otherwise be familiar with. Although many of them, it's all about TikTok right now. So we didn't have a lot of TikTok studios to show them. But we, so we also do a lot of work in the early childhood space. During COVID, we started up a program called Martha Reads on Facebook every Friday where Martha reads actually the stories from our, from our uh, PBS Kids Writers Contest. The winners, these, these elementary school kids who write these stories, she reads them online. And because we weren't able to go out to, the, to parents and schools to, to read, we did it online. And it's become so popular, we've continued it, get about 6,000 views every, every week. So Martha Razor, who heads our uh, children's services, has been doing that for now almost three years. Um, we now have three vans. Call us, we'll come on out. We've got a, a literacy van that we've had for many years. We've now got an environmental van, and we've got the STEM van. You can see each van has a bunch of the characters that the kids are going to be familiar with from the TV programs. Mm -hmm. And we'll come out and have a whole curriculum of items and working with your uh, youngest uh, children to have a really fun experience within the school. So um, last, uh, not well, the year before COVID happened to us, of course, there wasn't a lot of visits during COVID. We had 150 van visits the year before COVID. So we'd like to get back up to that kind of experience. So uh, just give us a call and we'll, we'll get out there to you. And finally, most importantly, as school board members, you'd like to know how your investment in WHRO is doing. Mm -hmm. And on page 13, we summarize that return on investment. So last year, you invested $55,000 in WHRO and you received value and savings of $538,000. That's about a nine to one return on your investment. Mm -hmm. Hopefully you're Brokers are doing that well too, uh, but if not, uh, with that, I'm happy to take any questions that you might have. Thank you very much. Questions from board members or comments? Ms. Fonja? Just a quick comment because I wanted to comment on the Green Beats um, van and the presentation at our last meeting, we were able to actually see a presentation by the Green Beats, and it was just awesome. It was just an amazing presentation. I can't wait for um, so many of our Hampton Elementary Schools for them to come and do that presentation for them. It was, um, it was just a great content. It was so musical, um, great musical ability from the folk that were presenting it, um, and it was just a great presentation. I was really excited to see it. Always excited when I go to the meetings about all the great things that are happening, all of the curriculum content that's available for our teachers. Um, and, and I just think I'm so glad you're here tonight to present that and to show everyone else a little taste of what's going on. Thank you. I appreciate that. The Green Beats series, there. If you, for some of us of an age, you remember uh, Schoolhouse Rock. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you're giving your age away. Um, so, uh, so we've done two series, Green Beats, which is environmentally focused topics, but we also have done Health Beats, which are health related topics. Mm -hmm. These are animated shorts that we do the animation, we use local musicians to do the music side of it, and we give them to you. So your schools have all these, you can play them how, however it works within your schools, morning announcements or however you want to use them, but they're yours. So um, if, if you don't have them, obviously, obviously Dr. Smith can call me and we can make sure that you have them to be able to use that are obviously free to use however you see fit. So mm -hmm. you can put them in your social media or your TV station or however you want to use them. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Right. Any other comments from board members? Yes, Vicki. Um, I just want to say, like, first of all, I really like the fact that you're actually hearing the students' perspective and letting us see the course and see if there's any adjustments that can be made. And secondly, I just really like the fact that it's, like, online, so it's accessible to any, everybody, and the fact that you guys actually have, like, vans and stuff, and you're bringing it to the schools so everybody can, like, the elementary school students can have hands-on experience, because really I think that's how truly we learn, not just from a screen, but actually being able to like, oh, see how it's done in person. So I just really think that's really wonderful. Yeah, students are different and that some students learn differently. Some, it's great to be in front of a screen, others hands-on. We wanna be there in every way for, for kids. We don't want kids sitting in front, frankly, we don't want kids sitting in front of a TV all day long. That's the last thing we want. We wanna get them out and you know, what you've, you know, we're honored with today with all the environmental work. We, we love that. That's why we're doing so much in the environmental education space, which encourage them, kids to get out into the environment and see what's going on, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Thank you. Ms. Cherry? 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. First of all, let me say, you all do such great work. Thank you. And it's so well respected and so widely recognized throughout the state and beyond. Um, I know, you know, you talk about School House Rocks. Oh, yeah. My kids even, I think WHRO is the way they learn language arts and math. Because I remember them going around the house singing, Conjunction, Junction, what's your function? <laughs> and I tell you, it was exciting. But one of the things I like that you're doing today is the focus that you give when you have those many interviews with the superintendents around the areas. You know I have to come to you. We got to get an update. Mm -hmm. what, what did you say? Everybody's, all this, I've been telling the superintendents, because of COVID, we didn't do a lot of production. Right. We need updates from every division. Mm -hmm. So, um, But I think it gives such um, an eye-opening yeah. view to people who just may not know what's going on in various school divisions. Now, I will admit, when Dr. Smith's not on there, I do tend to channel search. All right. But all right. I come back, I come back and watch what other people are doing. But I think that is really great. We want to share with the whole region the best practices of these school divisions. Mm -hmm. We are advocates for you. You own the license. So. I'm encouraging all the schools to really take advantage of WHRO. Our yeah. crew will come out, we'll work with, with Dr. Smith and the team and, and brag about whatever you want to brag about. Yeah, so, exactly. Um, we, no, I have it locked we, in we get on together Cox. Next, we're getting together next week and I'm going to be, he'll be regularly hearing me say, let's come on out and, make, and update you with the most current um, piece. But you become a little bit of a TV star when, you, when you're on our air regularly. So I'm sure you've experienced yeah. that. Well, he's a little bit of a TV star now. Well, we know. Okay. <laughs> he's been a star for a long time. <laughs> yeah, but I've got you locked in. Cox Channel 15, love it. Love it. Absolutely. Love it. Thank you so much. Well, it's an honor being here again at the home of WHRO at 1961, so thank you very much. Yeah. Thank I you. appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Take care. Thanks. Great job. Thank you, Mr. Chair. At this time, we'll move to uh, the, depart the Department of Special Education, uh, and uh, we will receive an update. and. Uh, Ms. Judge, our Director for Special Education Services. Um, she's coming forward, and I don't know, Dr. Cacciano, uh, whether or not you're going to provide some introduction and context, and then turn it over to uh, Ms. Judge. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure, thank you, Dr. Smith. Good evening, Chair Mason, Vice Chair Cherry, members of the board, Dr. Smith. Uh, not too long ago, as the board will recall, we had the opportunity to share some achievement data with the board, and we took a look at uh, some different st uh, student group data. And there were some celebrations in that data, and one of those celebration areas was that of the student group of students with disabilities. So this evening, Mrs. Kimberly Judge, our Director of Special Education, is here to share with the board some of the ongoing work that her department is involved in and really how it's directly contributed to some of those gains in student achievement. So as I've said before, i uh, certainly thank Mrs. Judge for her leadership. I know she has one or two team members here this evening as well. So without further ado, Mrs. Judge, uh, we look forward to hearing uh, from your, uh, your department this evening. Thank you so much, Dr. Caggiano. Good evening. Board Chair Dr. Mason, Vice Chair Cherry, school board members, Superintendent Dr. Smith, and the Hampton community. I come before you this evening to provide you with some updates from the Department of Special Education as it pertains to serving our students with disabilities here in Hampton. On the agenda this evening, we'll take a look at our systematic approach. We'll also look at who, what, when, where, and how we do what we do as well as using our data purposefully. Our core business in Hampton City Schools is always maximize, maximizing student learning through teaching and learning. That is what we are anchored in. Dr. Smith speaks to that all the time and that is who we are in Hampton City Schools. So who are we? Our department, or my department is comprised of all of these individuals noted up here. There are eight coordinators three teacher specialists, two behavior specialists, one Medicaid specialist, one transition specialist, an intervention assistant, and an adaptive PE teacher, all of which who are named here to include myself, and we provide services and supports to all of our students and schools here in Hampton. We have departmental tenants that govern the work that we lead and do on a daily basis, and they're very aligned with the HCS strategic plan. Um, those tenants are leading learning, leading ourselves and others, ensuring compliance, and leading the use of resources. Under those tenants, you will see the strategic plan, um, the strategic plan outlines that are noted there. 
Our why is not only because we're governed by federal and state regulations, but because, again, as we say here in Hampton, it is every child, every day, whatever it takes. And so understanding that, we provide a continuum of services for our students with disabilities. We acknowledge and understand that special education is specially designed instruction for our students with disabilities. To their extent possible, they are served in their least restrictive environment, so they, are, they receive um, tier one instruction, and it is not in place of, so the tier three instruction is not in place of tier one instruction. It is in addition to tier one instruction. And we always reiterate the fact that special education is a service, it is not a place. And it's always based on IEP team development and implementation. So let's begin with talking about our leading learning. How do we get it done? So in leading learning, we develop teachers and staff skill sets by various ways. We provide effective implementation of specially designed instruction, which is our tier three instruction. We collaborate with, on instructional walks with our CIA team members. We also collaborate in data meetings, as well as we have um, developed trained and implemented our own tier three reading programs, one of which at the elementary level is the direct strategic, direct systematic decoding instruction at the elementary level, DSDI, and also at the secondary level, it's direct systematic literacy program, and we work with staff members on those high leverage practices, supporting them with classroom configuration, supporting our efforts and our partnership with Project Search, which is we have two sites, Centera and Fort Eustace, and also focusing on some of the needs in our uh, low incidence population classes, which one is serving students with autism spectrum disorder and also addressing some of those intense behaviors. And the professional development that's noted over to the right, is what we use to support that leading learning. With leading learning, we always begin with the end in mind, and so I'm very proud of this graphic here mm -hmm. because it identifies and it highlights the graduation rate for on-time graduation with Hampton City School students. And if you'll notice there on that graphic, Hampton City Schools has exceeded the um, graduation rate for students with disabilities across the state at 99.5% on-time graduation quite impressive and it speaks to the collaboration and the efforts of our special education, general education teachers, building administrators, related service staff members, as well as other school staff, parents, and additional stakeholders. Our wall-to-wall -wall academies also give multiple opportunities for students to be truly engaged in their, in their learning, which are also attributes to that on-time graduation rate. Here it's highlighted, and I will just reference this. You've seen these next two slides previously when Drs. Um, Caggiano and Haynes presented on September the 7th about the state accreditation and accountability. Mm -hmm. But I just wanted to acknowledge and reference the fact that HCS also outperformed the state in varying student gaps, stu student groups. And in particular, students with disabilities outperformed or we worked to close the achievement gap in the areas of reading on this slide and math on the other, and that was previously presented. How are we leading ourselves and others? In leading ourselves and others, we continue to collaborate with human resources to ensure that we attract, develop, and retain exceptional staff members here in Hampton City Schools for our scholars. Ongoing professional development is provided in multiple ways. We did, we front loaded a lot of professional development with our new hires and teachers new to Hampton City Schools in August. We also provided professional development for all of our teachers and related service staff members of individuals, of working with individuals with um, disabilities. We provided training to building administrators on best practices and what the processes should be for educating our students with disabilities in their school and supporting their teacher teams and educating students with disabilities. Additionally, we have interdepartmental collaborate, collaboration, and that is with student services, family engagement specialists, CTI, um, CTE, and additional um, other departments. Additionally, we work with um, the Department of Innova um, Induction and Development, Dr. Richardson's department, with new teacher circle sessions. So we support our new teachers ongoing with um, circles so that we can talk to them about what is job embedded concerns or things that they need some help and support with on a daily day on a day-to-day -day basis 
as well. Students that have a 504 plan, we provided training for them up front, the teachers up front, as well as we continue to do that on an ongoing basis. How we um, lead ourselves with the learning so that we can make sure that we're getting the work done. We're um, a part of many professional groups to include the Virginia Council for Special Education Administrators, so, so uh, VKs, as well as those professional development opportunities that are noted there to the right, um, again, to help us make sure that we're leading ourselves and others. Additionally, as a part of our guaranteed and viable TARC curriculum, we provide um, recommendations that are about differentiated instruction as well as modifying instruction for those students who are having some difficulties are grappling with contents and skills taught. And so that's embedded in our curriculum, our guaranteed and viable curriculum. It's stage four in most of all of the content areas. And so it's noted there, and here's just a little screenshot of one of those, and that's taken out of the math curriculum. Our transition specialist works to ensure that all students with disabilities, or all of our students with disabilities are aware of and have access to transition services during their time in Hampton City Schools mm -hmm. and post-secondary to the extent possible. She works collaboratively with community partners and stakeholders to provide such opportunities as noted here on the screen to, inscrute, to include Transition Tuesdays, Career Exploration Academy, um, again, Project Search, which is a national initiative, and we have a site at Hampton Centera, as well as Fort Eustis and students um, assigned there. We have a job coaching program. We have collaboration with our CTE program, as well as our PREETS, which is the Pre-Employment Transition Services, which is an early start to career exploration for students with disabilities starting at age 14. And that partnership is with the Department of Aging and Rehabil Rehabilitative Services. In addition to that, we have on site in Hampton City Schools um, a PAYS lab, which is a practical um, assessment exploration system, and that is run by one of our own very skilled and trained and dedicated instructional assistants who's been doing it for many years at Phoebus High School. Ensuring compliance. As a way of ensuring compliance, of course, data, 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 numbers talk. And so we do da data reviews. We have indicators and state reporting that are ongoing throughout the course of the year and into the summer. There is school and classroom visits that we do collaboratively with our CIA team. There is compliance reviews. Also, we attend meetings and support school teams, and we work collaboratively with our parents and families and guardians to help them understand the process and to navigate through the process of educating students with disabilities. Professional development opportunities are noted there as well. Leading the use of human resource, leading the use of resources, Again, in Hampton, we're about, we um, invest in people and not in programs, and so understanding such, we work collaboratively with human resources, and so what we have done is, in partnership with human resources, we work to build capacity at the school level, and so we've done screenings of our potential applicants to ensure that they're most compatible for not only the school building, but for the students and their needs in that school building, so that we are intently address addressing the needs of those individuals, and we're developing capacity as such. Um, Additionally, after screening the um, candidates and getting them out to building administrators so that they make informed decisions about how they build their school teams, we provide classroom supplemental materials. And some of the things that we provide are sensory tools, flexible seating, um, and other teaching aids. Not only do we provide those resources, but we also coach and model what those re how to utilize those resources and also have um, collaborative learning team meetings on a monthly basis. With the use of our resources, here is just a snapshot of some of the um, funds. As the board is aware, we have a variety of funding pots to support our students with disabilities. And whether they're through state and local funds or, or also the federal funds, we recently um, have gotten some, some additional funding. And so here is what we have expended and also we've encumbered and also expended to date. So with the CARES ESSER funds, a little bit over $114,000 to supplement our summer programming to address learning loss as identified in a student's individualized education plan. Um, some amendments needed to be done to make those adjustments so that those services were outlined. Also materials were needed for health mitigation strategies and also to ensure classroom configuration was such that it was safe for all of our students. Through the AR, PA, 
funds, so the ARP funds, University um, Corner, mm -hmm. which all of our students have access to participate in at the schools in which it is uh, they are um, assigned to, as well as participation in our flex learning. The specially designed instruction is put in place there and there are teachers that are certified and trained to provide those services. Additionally, IDEA, which is the Individuals with Disabilities Act, there's a little bit um, right at about 400,000, close to $400,000 that has been allocated, um, encumbered and expended, and that's for contract medical and related services. We do have medically fragile students that require some additional supports while in school to receive their education, and so we provide that contract, those contract medical services. Yes, we are one division, one transformation. We are getting it done for our students and our, our scholars here in Hampton City Schools. I thank you for your time here this evening, and I welcome any questions you may have at this time. Thank you so much, Ms. Judge. Thank you. Any comments or questions from board members? Ms. Banks Gray. Thank you, Chair Mason. So, Ms. Judge, amazing presentation, but I'll, I'll ask a, a quick question of you. Can you please take your presentation back to slide number nine, I believe it is. Now, I don't know about the rest of the audience, but uh, let her, I'm gonna let you get there really quickly. Mm -hmm. But I, I want to, <laughs> it's the actual trend, oh, the graduation. year graduation rate for our students with disability. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I just wanna point this out. If you guys, if y'all, y'all don't know if you just kinda went over this and everybody really did not digest these numbers, mm -hmm. but I want you to kinda look at these numbers once again, because when I talk to you about an amazing trend, for Hampton City Schools, mm -hmm. very impressive, very impressive. And to the point, I even think this, this deserves a round of applause, y'all. I'm sorry, this is absolutely amazing. You just don't see numbers like this on, on a daily basis. And to see this from 2015 to 2022, job well done, very impressive. Mm -hmm. um, and all, like always, you did an amazing job with your presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's a collaborative effort. Appreciate it. Well, I don't know about the rest of the board members, but I'm not surprised because if you remember the last time Ms. Judge was with us, she gave us about a 66 page slide presentation. So I knew she understood every policy. What happens with a child with a disability on the left thumb? What happens with a child with a disability on the right thumb? So I can see how the progression, and we've continued to provide these services to our students, and we can see the growth and the trend, how we've continued to provide them with the resources. So thank you so much. Other comments from board members? Uh, yes. Go ahead, Dr. Dr. Woodhouse. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, Ms. Judd, a wonderful presentation on tonight. I thank you so very, very much. Um, I was looking at the transition Tuesday. I'm just being curious about what's that, what's that consist of. That's a great question. So the Transition Tuesday is something, it's, a, it's in collaboration with neighboring school divisions and our transition specialists all work together and network. And so at that time they provide, um, and let me make sure I get this correct, so I made sure that I had, um, it's a virtual interactive webinars that provides um, interactive information for parents and guardians about transition services for their students with disabilities. Okay, mm -hmm. I must say that um, we have one of the one of the top uh, programs over here for special needs students. Um, I, I could give you a testimony about a young man who uh, was in special needs, graduated from our school system, and he's a manager of a McDonald's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> awesome. So y'all, you do a great job. So thank you so much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And it's great to hear those success stories. Mm -hmm. Mr. Samuels. Thank you, Chairman uh, Mason. I, I, I just want to uh, put this out there. You know, Ms. Judge and I go way back. Several years ago when Ms. Judge was the principal at Newsom Park in uh, um, Newport News. And I'm so glad that you are here with us in Hampton. And so I have a quick question. I, I, you mentioned um, the, the slide we were talking about. You, you discussed um, flex learning. And you may not have this information, but how many of our um, students with disability um, chose to um, utilize that service? That's the first question. The second question, for our families who decide to do homeschooling with their student with special needs or child or children with special needs, how is Hampton City School supporting those families? 
Good questions. Um, so with the Flex Learning Program, we currently have 13 students with disabilities enrolled, and we do have a certified special education teacher that is mm -hmm. teaching those individuals and providing that specially designed instruction alongside with the general education teacher. Um, and then also with regard to your second question and homeschooled students, so if a, stu if a parent opts for homeschooling and their child has a disability, if they receive related services, I'll say speech, then there is an opportunity for them to receive walk-in speech and language services um, at the school but we have to have that information so we work in collaboration with um, our social work department Dr. Copeland um, works with the homeschool individuals and once we have that information then we provide those related services that are needed okay I have one more question as it relates to the university corner and I'm not mm -hmm. trying to take up much of your time um, Ms. Judge and and the reason I really like the fact that we afford our children with disability the opportunity to participate in, in, in the university corner because what it does now, it then blends both gen ed and special ed student in the after school program. So I think that's a fantastic way of both um, population learning how to work with each other. And so I'm so thankful that our students have that opportunity to do so. And um, with the University Corner, do they also provide some assistance with tutoring or uh, homework assistance also? Yes, absolutely. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other comments from board members? Yes. Mr. Fonja. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Judge. Excellent presentation as usual. Lots of information um, was included tonight, and I know we were trying to present it very succinctly, and I appreciate that. I'm very excited as well about these graduation rates, especially um, for our young people with disabilities. Um, and so from that, we kind of think about, so the graduation rate is really high, um, and what are our young people doing after that? And so I was really excited to hear about um, some of those transition services that you highlighted tonight. Could you tell me a little bit more about the Career Exploration Academy? I know this is one place where um, our students are challenged with disabilities, what career they may go into, uh, what work may look like for them post-graduation. Can you tell me if that is in conjunction with the academies or connected to the academies or something a little bit different? Yes, so it is in conjunction with the academies and what we did was we partnered with Virginia Department of Education and Virginia Commonwealth University and it was a partner that partnership lended itself to us doing um, three three camps at um, T, not Thomas Nelson Virginia Peninsula ECC. thank you. <laughs> so we partnered with them and so we offered career exploration opportunities where students were able to go and explore careers, look at what their interest level were um, based on that um, interest level then to kind of explore those careers. And so it's something that we started at, at onset with Virginia Commonwealth University as well as Virginia Department of Education. We have been in communication with CTE as well as the Academy so that we can mirror that so we can continue to align and have those inclusive practices. Um, with our students that have some more significant needs that don't really know where their career interests lie at this time. Very good. Okay. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Any other comments from board members? Question? Well, I just want to say, um, just comment on the fact that when I look at the numbers and all, especially with our SOLs, I know we've talked about it before with Dr. Caggiano at the, I think it was at the last meeting, looking at whether or not, you know, talk, having the discussion about our students, our special ed students not opting out of taking the SOLs, they actually compete, should I say, in the same realm with our gen ed students. And so that says a whole lot about what we're doing in special ed, but it's about a mindset and, and it's actually mentioned on, on slide six, you know, the special education is a specially designed instruction for a student with dis disability. It's not in place of tier one services, you know, and that's the big piece when it comes to special ed, that it's not in place of tier one services. You know, and, and you know, this is basically to support, it's an addition to. And I think that's probably what sets the bar high for us um, and how we're able to reach such high numbers when it comes to our special ed students. And so thank you very much in your department and your leadership and all that you do for, for our students in that area. So thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your time this evening. Mm -hmm. Dr. Smith. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. 
At this time, I'm going to ask uh, if uh, Dr. Raymond Haynes, who serves as our chief of secondary schools, um, he will at this particular time um, introduce and really just give a, a, a highlight regarding our on-time graduation uh, prior to uh, moving right into um, our success indicator around dual enrollment as well. And I know that we have uh, executive principals uh, who are present, and I know that we have grad specialists that we want to recognize as a part of that celebration with on-time graduation and so forth. So let me ask Dr. Haynes if you would uh, lead that discussion and then move into the dual enrollment. Thank you, Dr. Smith. Good evening, Chairman Mason, Vice Chair Cherry, members of the board, Dr. Smith, and members of the Hampton community. Before we get into the dual enrollment update, we certainly want to recognize the accomplishments of our class of 2022. We told you last month we would be back with more detailed information regarding how we performed in comparison to school districts in our region and just overall. Just like we compete for athletics, why not compete for academics and making certain that our young people right. graduate on time and focused on that portrait of a Hampton graduate, our promising commitment to the community. But before I get into some of that data, I, I can recall back when I was a principal at Kickerton, we started off with just two graduation specialists amongst the four high schools. It was Keisha Samuels. She split between Kickerton and Phoebus. I know Mr. Samuels knows that young lady. And Miss Dana Kurtz, who split between Hampton and Bethel. And as time emerged, as time moved on and we looked at the complexities and challenges that were faced with making certain that our young people graduated on time, we saw a need to make certain that we had a graduation specialist represented at each high school. Uh, with the aligned acts of improvement that evolved in 2015 when Dr. Smith came on board, along with uh, the work that Dr. Woods initiated, we continued to take that playbook and build it into hopefully what we would consider sort of kind of a masterpiece at this point. So before I begin reading the information in regards to where we are now and how we compare with those subgroups, I certainly want to call up all of the graduation specialists um, at this point to stand up here so that everyone can see the folks who are the boots on the ground and doing this work day in and day out. So we have at Bethel High School, Ms. Lynette Hextall Davis, At the Hampton High School, Mr. Melvin Brown. <laughs> Kickatan High School, Ms. Kakita Davis. <laughs> Phoebus High School, Dr. Nicole Boston Blanchard. <laughs> and at the Alternative Adult and Alternative Learning Center, Ms. Dana Kurtz. I'm not sure if she's here with us this evening or not. But Ms. Chambers is here representing the Alternative Learning Center. She and I were principals together when we had to split the uh, graduation specialist. But I certainly want you to take a good look at these individuals and the work that they do day in and day out, I would, I would say is second to none. We recognize the work that they do under the leadership of the executive principals who are also here with us tonight, Mr. Saunders. Ms. Pollard, Dr. Whiteman, and Mr. James Harris, along with some of the academy principals that oversee this work as well. I know we have Ms. Tanya Howard and Mr. Hanif Majed, who are also here as well. <laughs> Dr. Jones Kaysen, who represents the Department of Student Services. So we look at this whole One Division, One Transformation initiative that Dr. Smith has in place, but we also look at this from the village concept. It's a lot of people doing this work day in and day out, and I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge the classroom teachers who are there on the front end as well. Mm -hmm. So recognizing that we're looking at aligned acts of improvement through the systems approach, we recognize that there are success indicators that we focus on as early as when they enter elementary school to make certain we either keep a young person on track for graduation or get them back on track. So when they come in as ninth graders, they're looking at that cohort and looking at what we would consider risk lists and risk factors to make certain that we get them back on track, whether it's attendance, uh, discipline issues, uh, if they're failing a particular course, or having a certain amount of credits that they should have at this point. 
So we, we recognize and identify those things very early on to ensure that by the time they reach their senior year, you're not constantly trying to play catch up to get them to where they need to be as opposed to sort of kind of massaging and fine tuning what needs to happen to get them across the stage. So the on-time graduation rate, as you all know, represents graduates who earn diplomas within four years of the first time they entered the ninth grade. So the Hampton City Schools on-time graduation rate for all students in cohort 2022, which was 1,408 students, is the highest it has been to date at 97.64%. Woo! The dropout rate for the cohort remains under 1%. Wow. So here's where it gets even more interesting when I talked about when we compete for football, basketball, mm -hmm. and athletics, we also want to make certain we have some healthy competition around academics. In addition to all students, on-time graduation rates are broken out by 21 additional individual student groups, and on-time graduation rates continue to climb for student performance groups who are historically underrepresented. 97.51% of African-American students graduated on time. The state's average is 90%. Wow. 98.97 of Hispanic students graduated on time. The state's that. average is 83%. 97.9 of students classified as two or more races graduated on time. The state's average is 93.5. As Ms. Judge mentioned, 94.5% of students with disabilities graduated on time. The state's average is 89.9. 96.8 students of students classified as economically disadvantaged graduated on time. The state's average is 87.71. 90 90.9% of English learners graduated on time. The state's average is 72.69. peasy. 100% of our homeless students graduated on time. The state's okay. average is 76.4. How many? 100%. Oh, man. Hampton City Schools is one of 15 divisions in Region 2. Not only has cohort 2022 achieved the highest on-time graduation rate to date, it is also the highest of all 15 schools in our region. These rates range from 84.4% to Hampton's 97.64%. Our 0.62 dropout rate is also the lowest, mm. the lowest of Region 2. Those rates range from 0.62% to 12.7 percent. So I think that I would, um, it's sort of an understatement to talk about the great work that the graduation specialists do day in and day out, but you see them here before you today, and I think it's worthy of them being recognized in the most outstanding way. There we go. I certainly want to acknowledge Ms. Linda Dietz, who is the Director of Accountability and Data Support. She's not here with us this evening, but she's our data guru and gives us those data points and actually sort of kind of focuses us and guides us on what we need to, what we need to track. And that risk list, like I mentioned earlier, she updates on a regular basis. Ms. Amber Brown works very intimately with our graduation specialist on a monthly, sometimes weekly basis, and she is our Director of Secondary School Leadership. So I certainly want to acknowledge her as well. Bethel High School being the home of academic excellence, the Hampton High School, the legacy of, where the legacy of excellence continues, Kickatan High School, the home where everyday greatness is the expectation, Even and Phoebus High School where the purpose is greatness every day and every way. I believe these young ladies and gentlemen represent the models of their respective schools in, ex in an exceptional way and we thank you for your hard work day in and day out. Wow. The last point I wanted to make is, as soon as they get that class of 2022 across the stage, whether it's June or August, they are already focused on the class of 2023, yes, 24, 25, yep. and 26. Yep. The other day when we had some inclement weather, some if not all of them were actually still on the road 
some will name remain nameless. Mm -hmm. We want some home visits or visiting <laughs> places of employment to make certain that the young people had what they need to stay on track to graduate in this upcoming class of 2023. But we thank you all for your hard work day in and day out, and we continue to expect great things from you. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Uh -huh. Hold on, don't go anywhere. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, don't, don't go anywhere just yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah I can't go yet. Don't, don't, don't go anywhere just yet. All right. Board members, comments, questions? I, I know you have things to say. No, I, I just would like, <laughs> thank you. I, I just get so excited, you know, because I, I did this work with, uh, uh, when Miss Boston was working with my wife, Keisha, back, back in the day. And so I know the work that y'all do. I know when y'all go to these um, jails as far as Pennsylvania <laughs> to work with our babies to make sure that they walk across the stage. But Dr. Um, could you put that, if Dr. Uh, turn, Tatiana could put that slide up. If you could put that slide up of the accomplishments as we are talking to, you know, the, the slide that's on the, um, the website of the accomplishments, the on-time graduation and all that. Is, can we access that? You don't have that capability? Oh, no. he, he's, he's, going to the, he's going to the website. <laughs> I just want y'all to put it up. <laughs> I want to see it. Dr. Haynes, the first one. The first one. Mm -hmm. To the left. No. Go back. Go back, um, Dr. Caggiano. Right there. Right there. The first to the left there. First to the, first to the left. Uh, yes, right sir. there. Mm -hmm. And scroll down. Because I looked at it this morning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is amazing. Mm -hmm. I had the opportunity, Dr. Um, Smith, last night. I was speaking with a realtor who sells over 300 homes per month in the peninsula and on the south side. And I was so excited that on this morning, I copied and pasted and sent that information to him via email. Because I want him to highlight the work as they're selling homes in James City County, Williamsburg, Newport News, Norfolk, that we are a premier school division. And so, as he's selling homes, he needs to make sure that he highlight what we're doing in Hampton. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so I just wanted to thank you, Dr. Kajiana and Dr. Haynes, for um, putting that information up because that is, it's not just only hearing it, mm -hmm. it's we're seeing it. So, right. And parents want to know about this information too. So thank you all so much for the work y'all do. I, I'm telling you, my heart is just jumping out my chest. <laughs> and so. <sighs> we can hear the excitement. You know, his native tongue comes out when he gets excited. <laughs> Other board members' comments? Ms. Cherry? I, I, I just can't keep my mouth shut. I mean, my mouth is wide open. I mean, everything that you were naming, Dr. Haynes, it was mm -hmm. not an aha moment. It was a wow moment. Are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. And then what hit me more than anything was you telling me 100% of our students who are identified as homeless yeah. graduate? On, I mean, do you know how, how amazing that is and how very few school divisions can even say it? And you see what a state is, poor babies. But the point is, we show them how we do it in Hampton City mm -hmm. Schools. Mm -hmm. And I don't care who it is, I'm here to tell you, don't ever bet against Hampton City Schools because you will lose. So thank you so much. I appreciate everything you guys are doing. Wonderful graduation specialists, wonderful principals. God, I love all of you all. Mm -hmm. And we brag, I'm going to tell you, Mr. Sams will tell you, we brag to people who are so sick and tired of hearing it from us, we don't even care. And, and Poor Mr. Sam, he was getting emotional, but he didn't want to, you know, because Jamaicans don't like to be emotional. <laughs> so he didn't want to be emotional. But I saw it in his eyes as you were giving those numbers. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, I'm just, I'm just blown away mm -hmm. in a good way. I, mm -hmm. I can brag even more. I'm just mm -hmm. so excited. Not only for the work you're doing, but to say I'm a part of Hampton City Schools. And mm -hmm. anybody mm -hmm. who lives in the city of Hampton mm -hmm. who sees those numbers, man, you should shout. Mm -hmm. You should mm -hmm. just shout. Thank you so much again. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, and, and I'll add to that, you know, you mentioned the systematic approach starting when these students are in ninth grade. Mm -hmm. You know, from a therapeutic perspective, I always tell parents it's easier to manage a six-year-old than it is to start parenting at 16. Mm -hmm. You know, and so when you start in that ninth grade moment and you start to look at those things, you know, guess what? You're able to see where you need to make those changes. But also, the work that you all put into your job and that commitment that you have, that's, that, that's huge. You know, I'm, I'm not going to say who, but I know firsthand, you know, I was a dissertation chair for someone in this group, and I would call, you know, and oftentimes my schedule is busy, and so when I'm calling to talk about your dissertation, you say, hold on a minute, can I call you back? I'm at a house right now with a kid. And I'm thinking to myself, we said we were meeting at this time, and that person says, well, Dr. Mason, I really needed to talk to this kid, you know. I said, it's okay, so I know the heart I know the hard work that's put into what you all do every day, and so thank you on behalf of this board for your commitment to seeing these kids through to graduation, and the numbers show. So thank you for all that you do. Thank you, Dr. Haynes, and grad specialists, thank you so very much uh, again for your hard work and your dedication, um, and so we appreciate you. More to come, I know, um, and a, sta a standing ovation today, right? Yes, sir. Uh, but more to come as we continue to support and retain exceptional staff mm -hmm. uh, in that regard. I know you were sharing about Mr. Samuels and, con and containing his emotions, but some of the stories that these young people have of perseverance, tenacity, and resilience will actually bring you to tears. And um, mm -hmm. it's just amazing the work that they do day in and day out to right. ensure that our young people get across that stage. Mm -hmm. Even Dr. Haynes mm -hmm. to tears. <laughs> That's right. And if you can get Dr. Haynes to cry. Oh, no. <laughs> That's right. Firm, no all, all about young people. <laughs> <laughs> he will cry. Only time he shed tears is when Dallas loses. <laughs> <laughs> Steelers. <laughs> Steelers. <laughs> All right, we're going to go into the um, dual enrollment update, and Ms. Amber Brown is here, our Director of Secondary School Leadership. She's going to give an overview of dual enrollment opportunities, the dual enrollment design, growth trends, um, the Academy of the College experience that is at Phoebus High School, the benefits, and then, of course, we just finished our second cohort of the summer college experience. Mm -hmm. But this Time, I will turn it over to Ms. Amber Brown to give you the dual enrollment update. All right, I'm excited about this one too. Good evening, Chairman Mason, Vice Chair Cherry, members of the school board, Dr. Smith, and of course our Hampton community. Thank you, Dr. Haynes, for the warm introduction. This evening, we will be reviewing dual enrollment program at Hampton City Schools that we offer at each of our four high schools. Our dual enrollment program benefits our students and their families within the community. As Dr. Haynes mentioned, tonight's presentation, we will identify all of our dual credit opportunities provided to students, review the overall dual enrollment design to include our partnership with Virginia Peninsula Community College, the DE participation requirements, and course offerings. We'll also share a little data with you about our program growth and trends. We'll discuss the associate's degree pathways that are offered through our ACE Academy, and we'll highlight benefits gained from our dual enrollment completion, and finally, celebrate our successes from our second annual summer college experience. So I know this slide is familiar to you, and you've seen it before. But as you see throughout our presentation tonight, we continue to offer multiple entry and exit points along our journey. Our division utilizes a systems approach to provide structure and resources and ongoing support centered around the core of our work, which is maximizing every child's learning. Our young people are deserving of an enriched education that introduces them to the academic rigors and will not only ensure that they are college, career, and life ready, but also equip them with the dual enrollment opportunities and educational keys needed to unlock doors of opportunity along the journey. But it begins with our promise. Our promise to our students, our families, 
and our community. As you're aware, everything we do is anchored around the portrait of a Hampton graduate to ensure every student is prepared for success in careers, lifelong learning, and life. Through our collaborative work with colleges and universities, businesses, community leaders, and our military, we have redefined the essential knowledge, skills, and dispositions and experiences needed for success beyond graduation, regardless of the post-secondary journey that our students choose. We focus on educating the whole child, and we include content knowledge, career and life skills, communication, collaboration, and leadership, as well as my favorite, the positive sense of self and purpose. Mm -hmm. Our school division is committed to ensuring quality and equity through access to as many college and career experiences and opportunities as possible. And this includes breaking down the application barriers to provide access to college coursework and dual credit opportunities at each of our high schools. <laughs> so what is dual credit? Dual credit allows our high school students to enroll in college level courses and earn credit prior to their high school graduation. Students may earn dual credit by qualifying on a cumulative standardized exam in advanced placement, IB programs, or through dual enrollment coursework. Dual enrollment courses are college courses that are taught at our high schools by certified instructors. Specialized courses are also taught at the Governor's School for Science and Technology. The three most common dual credit opportunities are AP, which is advanced placement, IB, International Baccalaureate, and DE dual enrollment. So what are the differences, and which one is right for your child? AP is an international program that's run through College Board. AP offers robust and rigorous curriculum. It's taught by certified instructors within each school building. In May, our students will take a standardized exam and earn a qualifying score to receive course credit. Qualifying scores vary by post-secondary institution. They typically range between a three and a five in order to earn college credits. An example of this would be an AP Biology student who may earn a four in AP Biology. They would receive three college credits, possibly from Radford University. However, the University of Virginia may only accept a five, therefore students not earning that college credit. International Baccalaureate, or IB, is our international diploma program. It requires a qualifying exam score as well. There's an application process to attend IB, and students are normally selected their eighth grade year. They begin their cohort their freshman year, taking honors, pre-IB, IB, and AP courses. Our final dual credit opportunity is dual enrollment. High school juniors and seniors may apply and enroll in dual enrollment courses in order to earn their high school credits at the same time as they earn their college credits. Qualifying students take dual enrollment courses beginning their junior year. Students, however, who are enrolled in our ACE Academy may begin their DE coursework their sophomore year in order to complete all degree requirements prior to graduation. Students in our dual enrollment courses may earn a transferable college credit with a grade of C or higher and no qualifying exam. So your question, how can your child earn high school credit and college credit at the same time? Courses offered through our partnership with Virginia Peninsula Community College meet the diploma requirements for graduation from high school while also providing college credits through VPCC at no cost to our Hampton families. For example, students needing to take a 12th grade English graduation course. They may either take an English 12 course or honors English 12 course to receive the diploma requirement for a standard and an advanced diploma. Another option may be a student taking AP English 12, meeting the Virginia English requirements for the standard and advanced diploma. However, in order to receive the college credit, as we discussed before, they would need to earn the qualifying score. Some colleges will award credit for threes, while other colleges may only award credit for five. So tonight, when we discuss dual enrollment, we want to discuss how we believe in Hampton City Schools that equity 
through access and opportunity is breaking down barriers to advanced educational programs and vocational experiences. This includes introducing our students to college level curriculum and showing them how courses are not only designed for the student who strives to go to a four year college or university, but also those seeking advancement in vocational fields, requiring certifications or a higher grade or advancement in various branches of our military. This evening's presentation will highlight the dual enrollment program offered at each of our four high school campuses. But first, I wanna talk a little bit about the partnership that we have with Virginia Peninsula Community College. At this time, I would like to ask our community partners, Dr. Porter Brandon was unable to be with us tonight. However, we do have Dr. Carrie Ragno, the Vice President for Academic Affairs, if you'll stand. who is the Interim Vice President for Enrollment Management and Student Success. <laughs> Hampton City Schools is extremely fortunate to have a great partnership with Dr. Brandon, President of Virginia Peninsula Community College, along with her Vice President of Academic Affairs, Dr. Carrie Ragno, and the Interim Vice President, Janetta Hollins. It is only through our shared mission and ongoing collaboration that we're able to provide dual enrollment opportunities to each of our students. So thank you for, our, for your commitment to our students, our families, and our community. I would also like to recognize, they are unable to be with us tonight, but two other individuals who support our students behind the scenes. Ms. Alicia Lanier Stewart, who serves our student students at Kickatan and Phoebus High School, and Mr. Joe Kenley, who serves Bethel and Hampton High School. Our college and career coaches work directly with our DE students to ensure that our students are aware of every opportunity afforded to them. They also serve as liaisons between students, parents, our schools, and VPCC. So students who are interested in taking dual enrollment courses in high school must meet three requirements. First, students must be a high school junior or senior, except for those in our ACE Academy. Parents must give permission, and students must meet all admission requirements to VPCC and any prerequisites that are set forth. VPCC outlines the admission requirements that must be met prior to admission Prior to 2021, students were required to take the Virginia Placement Test, or VPT. However, Virginia Community College System has removed this testing requirement and it is used only as an alternate option for students to show academic readiness. VPCC has waived the SAT requirement at this time and is using the GPA and previous coursework to assist in the admissions process. This has opened opportunities to so many more of our students. Currently, students may be eligible to take DE courses if they are a current junior senior, have a cumulative GPA of 3.0 or higher, and have taken the prerequisites. Through our partnership with VPCC, we've been able to expand our course offerings. We currently offer a breadth of courses in English, math, science, and history, and we also offer several elective courses such as psychology, humanities, communications, creative writing, public speaking, health, and most recently, ethics. So why is dual enrollment the best option for your child? The better question is why not? High school juniors and seniors may enroll in these approved college courses, simultaneously earning their high school and college credit. Several courses offered through our partnership with VPCC meet the diploma requirements for graduation from high school while they earn these credits. And this is at no cost to our families. So now is the good stuff. The first dual enrollment courses were offered in 2015-16. The credits earned that school year totaled 518. Over the last seven years, our commitment to providing more opportunities to our young people has strengthened along with our enrollment. 
Student participation in dual enrollment courses and credits earned have steadily increased even during our pandemic. So to look at our seven year snapshot, our DE program has experienced tremendous growth. As you can see in 2022, we reached our highest amount earned at 5,647 credits. Last year alone, HCS was able to save our families a collective total of $877,812 in tuition costs, nearly 800,000 more than 2015. Over the past seven years, our students have earned a cumulative of 25,443 college credits. This equates to nearly $4 million in savings to our HCS families and tuition costs. I must emphasize once again that this would not have been possible without our partnership with Virginia Peninsula Community College. Thank you for helping our young people. The Academy of the College Experience, or ACE, is designed to provide students with a rigorous academic environment that actively supports high school graduation, college preparedness, military advancement, and workplace acumen and skills. Students in the ACE Academy have the opportunity to earn an associate degree in social science, science, or our newest associate degree, health science. The Associate of Social Science supports our students interested in pursuing careers such as psychology, counseling, education, and political science. Students enrolled in this pathway will complete 61 dual enrollment credits to satisfy the requirements. Students with a passion for science, math, or computer science would pursue the Associate of Science degree. This pathway requires a completion of 60 dual enrollment credits. Last year, as Hampton City Schools received approval to offer another associate degree in health science, this pathway is geared towards our students who are interested in health and wellness, in science and math. And the cohort of 2026 will be the first graduating class to receive this degree. Hmm. The dual enrollment courses provided offer a depth and breadth in each content area. They allow our students to dive deeper into the learning experience. In addition to earning competitive college degree and transferable college credits at no cost while in high school, students experience several other benefits that include rigorous college level courses, college resources available to them through VPCC, such as tutoring, research databases, and library services. They also receive several enrichment opportunities throughout the course. Our dual enrollment program also provides a smooth transition to the college experience. Students receive encouragement and assistance and support from college and career coaches, mentors, TNCC instructors, academy teachers, coaches, administrators, as well as a close knit cohort of peers striving for the same goals. And as a parent of a college student, I would be remiss if I didn't mention one of my favorite benefits, and that would be the incredible financial savings. They definitely add up. I'd also like to discuss tonight our summer college experience. Approximately one and a half years ago, Dr. Smith and Dr. Brannon envisioned a program that would provide opportunities for our students who may not necessarily have seen themselves on the college track. Both Dr. Smith and Dr. Brannon believe that often students simply need to be exposed to college opportunities and coursework in a nurturing environment that instills a sense of hope while providing wraparound services and support. Through their collaborative efforts, Hampton City Schools offered our first summer college experience to rising sophomore students. The first summer cohort in 2021 provided the opportunity for 24 students representing each of our high schools to enroll in STEM coursework in coding. In July, 
we celebrated our second annual summer college experience. 20 students were selected representing each of our four high schools. They participated in hands-on exploratory coursework in earth science and geology. Our students were selected based upon our executive principal recommendation, recommendations from our academy principals, our counselors and academy teams, and also for indicators that were identified showing our college readiness. We are pleased to have had two instructors that were VPCC instructors credentialed. One was our very own Kristen Coolbear, who is at Kikatan High School, and we also welcomed Lisa Hall from Pocosin City Public Schools, who I am pleased to say is now teaching for Hampton City Schools. <laughs> In our program, we offered authentic learning experiences. During this five-week experience, students participated in those in-depth, interactive lessons, move in the mornings and our experiments every afternoon. And by the end of each week, our young people applied their learning in the field. Students were able to use the knowledge gained from the classroom and discover science all around them. They conducted scientific investigations in the field, learning to construct their own investigations, their own hypotheses, and develop their own theories. They learned about the geologic time scale and analyzed fossils. Students also learned about the rock cycle, erosion, plate tectonics, and so much more, and they loved it. Our students learned that earth science and geology can be interesting, engaging, and yes, even fun. When you transform the classroom into an inquiry-based learning experience with real world application. Our student researchers traveled to Bell Island Park, Luckstone Quarry, Luray Caverns, Chipok State Park, and Cornwallis Cave. They also traveled to Ben and Jerry's. <laughs> I am pleased to add that upon completion of the course, one student decided that he now wanted to be a rapper and a researcher. <laughs> and that's what it's all about. And it starts with exposure, with support, and with hope. So what's next for Hampton City Schools? We will now look to develop our strategic plan to map out dual enrollment opportunities with academy alignment. We will expand our dual enrollment course offerings within each high school. We will build and expand our dual enrollment instructor capacity through graduate coursework. We will finalize our course sequence for the Associates of Health Sciences degree pathway. And we are on to creating our third annual summer college experience for the cohort of 2023. This concludes our dual enrollment presentation, and I welcome any questions you may have. Thank you very much. Board members, any comments, any questions? Ms. Afanja. I don't know that I necessarily have a, a question, but I definitely would like to comment um, because this is a very timely presentation for myself as I have a senior at Bethel High School graduating. And um, the assistance that she has received um, from Mr. Kenley and um, from Mr. Brittany Brown and from Dr. Lucas and everybody around this graduation support and career and, and counseling and it has just been exceptional. So I can attest firsthand that this is really happening. Um, it's not just a presentation, not just words on the paper, it's really happening. Mm -hmm. I'm getting updates and emails and text messages and um, all kinds of supportive opportunities to help us to get her into a college of her choice. And so I think it's really remarkable what's going on, um, even for children who are college bound. The process is daunting to say the least even when you have parents who have experienced college who have graduated it continues to be daunting um, and so the support is much much appreciated and very very welcome 
um, by parents like myself, and I'm sure many, many other parents out here. Um, so I'm just really appreciative of that. I also, Ms. Lanyard Stewart contacted me about speaking to her graduation class over at Kikatan, and I was able to go and do that. Um, and I just see a lot of um, momentum around graduation and from these individuals in particular about getting our young people over over that hump and into the next stages of their lives. And I, I think it's really remarkable and I'm very appreciative of it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mr. Samuels? Yeah, thank you, um, Chairman. Um, and I think Joe and I can actually uh, co-speak on this when you know we initially hired Dr. Smith back in 2015. And one of Dr. Smith uh, um, remarks to the board as we were interviewing him, and, and thereafter he, he, he spoke of his experience at the other school where he was the superintendent, I'm not going to name that um, location. And, and, and so when he brought it to the board's attention, we were all on board. And then he had a conversation with Dr. Dever at then Thomas Nelson Community College. And it just grew from there. I remember Dr. Smith there when, before you came on board, I think we, had, we only had like two students in Hampton City School to be enrolled. And they, were, they had to pay out of pocket. Mm -hmm. and, and Dr. Smith also asked this question, why? And how can we fix this? And as we look through the lens of equity, this has come to, 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 to fruition where we now have gone from 500 and plus um, dual enrollment mm -hmm. credits to now over 5,000. Mm -hmm. And the benefit it has afforded our children in Hampton mm -hmm. City Schools. Mm -hmm. And so with the vision of Dr. Smith and the support of this board, mm -hmm. um, the sky's the limit for us, man. Mm -hmm. And I'm just so excited with the opportunity with um, um, VPCC with um, both Dr. Hollins and Dr. Rojas here with us, mm -hmm. and we would like to continue this partnership and, and um, leverage the playing field for our student. Mm -hmm. And I, I can speak personally that my daughter graduated Hampton City School with 30, 32 credit hours, and she's now at Norfolk State. And although she is a sophomore, she's technically a junior. Mm -hmm. And she's considering um, doing the five-year master's program at Norfolk mm -hmm. State. So we're excited about that, that Hampton, um, High, uh, Hampton City School afforded her that opportunity and afforded my family. Mm -hmm. um, because to this day, Keisha and I, Keisha and I have only paid, I believe, $3,000 to um, Nor the Norfolk State University because of <coughs> those dual enrollment <coughs> credits. So thank you, Dr. Haynes. And if possible, if I could just recognize our community partners one time, one more time from Virginia Peninsula Community College, yes. Dr. Rano mm -hmm. and Ms. Hollins. Thank you again. We, we, we would like to get them on camera. Come on down so that uh, uh, the viewing audience get, will have the opportunity to see you as well as uh, partners from the Virginia Peninsula Community College. So let's welcome them. Thank you so very much for your mm -hmm. partnership. Mr. Chair, while they are coming, can yes. I ask uh, yes. one question? Um, mm -hmm. I was just curious to find out um, which one of the programs has the most student participation. Uh, I know that the, the IB program is very difficult for a lot of students to get into, but uh, I was wondering which one has the most participation as far as students is concerned. I can't, I can't. Our dual enrollment. dual enrollment. Yes, sir. By far, our dual enrollment program. I, was, I thought so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sure. We just wanted to thank you all so much for the continued partnership, for inviting us here today, mm -hmm. and for just sharing with us your excitement. Um, we share your passion for your students. Um, I'm very new to VPCC. I began this summer in my tenure there, and one of the first things I heard uh, when I met my new supervisor, Dr. Brannon, was the wonderful partnership and the investment of Hampton City Schools in dual enrollment, as well as what we've been hearing here all evening, the wonderful things you do uh, for your students in your division. So we're pleased and proud. We look forward to growing the partnership, and we are here for whatever you may need. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Good evening, and I would just like to echo Dr. Ranyo's statements. It has been a true pleasure to learn more and to collaborate with Hampton City Schools. I am so excited to, to just educate myself on dual enrollment and how impactful it is for, for our students. My son as well um, was a recipient of dual enrollment, and so I do understand how impactful and helpful it can be to families. So um, again, I appreciate the collaboration and I look forward to doing great things. Thank you. Great, great. Mr. Chair. Yeah. Mr. Kilgore? Yeah, just real quick. Um, <laughs> several of the board members, uh, we got to go to uh, the graduation mm -hmm. of, at that time, Thomas Nelson, now Virginia Peninsula Community College. And a uh, little interesting tidbit, I believe that Hampton City School students are changing the average graduating age um, of the graduating classes. Yes. And that's probably going to continue. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing is, speaking to the, the financial savings being so important, I know Dr. Smith and I have talked about the fact that the numbers that you reported are for what it would cost for the credit hours from uh, VPCC. However, depending on where you transfer those credit hours, yes, that number can be significantly greater mm -hmm. for some families. Mm -hmm. So um, mm -hmm. just uh, kudos to a great program and a great presentation. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yes. Yeah. Any other comments? <laughs> great. Thank you. Dr. Smith? Sure, thank you. Okay. Um, we'll move to the final. Um, Superintendent and staff report, and that is to ask um, Ms. Brittany Branch to come forward, our chief financial officer, and uh, she will provide the board with the financial report. Yes. And I think when you place in context all that we heard in terms of uh, the reports this evening, and you think of the investment on the finance side uh, and the importance of that, so a wise and also um, meaningful investment in terms of um, our young people. Yes, I would agree. Good evening, Chair Mason, Vice Chair Cherry, school board members, and Superintendent Dr. Smith and the Hampton community. Um, tonight, I have the pleasure of presenting the monthly report for both July and August of 2022. At the end of July, our revenues totaled $10.4 million. This was approximately 13% higher when compared to the previous fiscal year. At the end of August, our revenues totaled $22.8 million, and this is 16.31% higher than August of 2021 of the previous fiscal year. And this difference was driven by the increased state funding, um, primarily with sales tax, and then also the timing of our local governing body, our local contribution, which that's always changing based on our monthly cash flow. Our cumulative expenditures and encumbrances, they totaled 36 million at the end of July, and then 47 million at the end of August. Both of these numbers were lower than the previous fiscal year, but that is because we had less encumbrances that rolled forward from the previous school year to the current school year that we're in. In the July and August reports, you will notice that we did add the carry forward funds from fiscal year 2022 and the fiscal year 2023 as they relate to encumbered funds. However, we do have a placeholder for those unspent funds because we did submit those to city council and we're awaiting for city council approval. Included in the budget um, report, as always, we have the list of transfers to and from the technology classification for both July and for August as well. And as a reminder, our fiscal year 2023 budget, it is based on the ADM of or average daily membership for the public, 18,870. And once we do submit the fall membership report to the state, we'll do a comparison to see if we need to make any adjustments to our budgeted average daily membership. That completes tonight's report for July and August of 2022. Thank you. Thank you. Comments or questions from board members, Ms. Branch? No, I, um, Chairman, I just want to say I had a question um, in regards to one of the fund balance tran um, transfer, and Ms. Um, Robin Ruth was able to answer mm -hmm. that question um, mm -hmm. earlier this week. So thank you, Ms. Um, Ruth. Mm -hmm. All right. 
Dr. Smith. Mr. Chair, Vice Chair, members of the board, that concludes the superintendent and the staff reports. Thank you, Ms. Blanks. All right. All right. So moving right along to item number five on the agenda, deliberation. So we have 5.01. Excuse me, proposed with the uh, right of entry permit and license to occupy. 5.02, revision of the school board policy IC, school year, school day. 5.03, revision of school board policy IF, curriculum development. 5.04, revision of school board policy IGAE slash IGAF, health physical education. 5.05, revision of school board policy, IGAG, teaching about drugs, alcohol, and tobacco. 5.06, revision of school board policy, IGAH, family life education. 5.07, revision of school board policy, IGAJ, driver education. 5.08, revision of school board policy, IJD, college and career readiness. 5.09, revision of school board policy LC-E, charter school application addendum. 5.10, revision of school board policy LEB, advanced courses for credit. 5.11, revision of school board policy LI, relations with, relations with educational accreditation agencies. And let's see here, let's first read deliberation. Dr. Caggiano. Yes, sir, Dr. Mason, did you want to start with uh, 5.02 through 5.11? Uh, yeah, well, you know what, actually, we can go ahead and get Dr. Bolin with 5.01 out of the way first. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm here tonight on behalf of Bridgman Civil Engineering Contractors uh, who have been awarded a sewer improvement project for Hampton Road Sanitation District. Uh, this project will be located in Hampton, Virginia and take roughly a year to complete. Mm -hmm. uh, Bridgman Civil Engineering is seeking the board's approval for a right of entry and license to occupy approximately two acres of board property located at Old Buck Road Junior High School. Uh, this location is proposed to be used as a construction laydown yard uh, for sand, gravel, and plastic pipe. Uh, additionally, uh, it should be noted that they will be paying a rental fee, and then at the end of the project, uh, they will return the property to its original condition. Uh, the property is just down the road here, just a few blocks, and it currently already is being used as a laydown yard by another construction company as well um, and if it pleases the board um, and it is the will of the board I would ask that we could uh, move this item to an action item tonight due to the timely manner in which this needs to uh, get back to the construction company okay mm -hmm. Are there any questions I could answer for you mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, right. Board members, you've heard the request. Is there a motion? Mr. Kilgore? Chair. Yeah, Mr. Chair, um, I move that we move uh, deliberation item 5.01 to action item 6.11. Mm -hmm. Second. All right, it's been moved by Mr. Kilgore and seconded by Ms. Cherry that we move deliberation item 5.01 to actions for items for action, and it will become 6.11. Any discussion from board members? Ms. Bowers, would you please call for the vote? Ms. Cherry? Aye. Mr. Kilgore? Aye. Mr. Samuels? Aye. Dr. Woodhouse? Aye. Ms. Safanja? Aye. Ms. Banks Gray? Aye. Dr. Mason? Aye. Motion carries, and item point five zero one will be 6.11 under items for action for tonight. All right, now, Dr. Caggiano. All right, All right. thank you, uh, Chair Mason. Mm -hmm. uh, 
as you all will recall, during the last board meeting, I had the opportunity to share with the board the rationale for the proposed changes for these policies here, mm -hmm. policies five and representing items 5.02 through 5.11. So mm -hmm. this evening, I would be happy to address any questions in reference to those. I did want to make one comment, Chair Mason, in reference to policy LCE. I know during the last meeting you had brought up that uh, there is some pending legislation in Richmond regarding the possibility of lab schools mm -hmm. and how would that particularly impact this particular policy. And, and in conversation with VSBA, the suggestion at this point is because that is not yet law and it is just proposed legislation that they will provide guidance to school divisions pending approval of that legislation. So at this time we are in good standing uh, the way our, our, our policy is currently structured. Okay. All right, thank you for that research. Any other questions? Clarifying questions from board members? All right. Thank you, All right, Dr. Thank you. All right. We'll move to item six on the agenda, which items for action. We have 6.01, deletion of school board policy DO-R, grants protocol for Hampton City Schools. 6.02, revision of school board policy JED, attendance policy. 6.03, revision of school board policy JEG, exclusions and exemptions from compulsory school attendance. 6.04, review of school board policy JGB, prohibition of bullying students. Item 6.05, review of school board policy JGC, student disciplinary alternative placement. Item 6.06, .06, revision of school board policy JHCB, student immunizations. 6.07, revision of school board policy JHCE, recommendation of medication by school personnel. 6.08, revision of school board policy JHH, suicide prevention and intervention. 6.09, revision of school board policy JP, all electronic devices. 6.10, revision of school board policy, KNAJ, relations with law enforcement authorities. And now 6.11, the proposed with right of entry permit and license to occupy. And what is the will of the board? Mr. Chair, can we uh, take all of these in one, uh, one block? Is, is that the I'll motion? make a motion then that we take them all in one block. Okay. Second. All right, it's been moved by Dr. Woodhouse that we approve tonight's items for action as a block and seconded by Ms. Banks Gray. Any discussion? Ms. Bowers, would you please call for the vote? Mr. Kilgore? Aye. Mr. Samuels? Aye. Dr. Woodhouse? Aye. Ms. Safanja? Aye. Ms. Banks Gray? Aye. Ms. Cherry? Aye. Dr. Mason. Aye, motion carries. All right, moving on to item seven, deliberation first read, 7.01, re review of school board policy BBB, school board membership, 7.02, review of school board policy BBBA, school board <laughs> mem member qualifications, 7.03, review of school board policy BBD, board member removal from office, 7.04, review of school board policy BBE, unexpired term fulfillment. 7.05, revision of school board policy BDA, regular school board meetings, formerly school board meetings. 7.06, review of school board policy BDDC, agenda preparation and dissemination. 7.07, .07, review of school board policy BDDG, minutes. 7.08, review of school board policy BFF, suspension of policies. 7.09, review of school board policies BJA, liaison with school boards association. All right. Ms. Ruth? Yes, sir, good evening. Um, all of the policies that are on the first read uh, agenda this evening are board policies. They are all five-year reviews with the exception of policy BDA. And there is a recommended change to the title of the policy. There's no change to the content of the policy, um, but they w are recommending and, and we are also recommending that the name of the policy be changed from board meetings to regular school board meetings. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and other than that, as I said, all of the policies are five-year reviews with no recommended changes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anything for board members? Yes, uh, Chair Mason, BDA still had the organizational uh, meeting as July, and we've moved that to January. 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 Yes, and I believe that's the fifth paragraph down. Mm -hmm. Good catch. Mm -hmm. That is a great catch. We will mm -hmm. um, change that, and it will be reflected as a January meeting when you see this again on the deliberation agenda. Real good. Great Thank catch. you. And I think there's a date for that January meeting that has been established too. Mm -hmm. But that will probably change every year. Yeah. So we'll okay. just say the You'll first make meeting January. in January. First me yes. Okay. Yes. Correct. Yes. For this verbiage, it needs to be changed to yes. January. Yes. Thank you. Catch. Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ruth. All right. All right. Moving along. Item number eight, hearing of any delegations or presentations of any written communications or petitions. And I have two. So Ms. Bowers, would you please read the protocol? Citizens are invited to address the school board on matters of public concern about the school division. <clears throat> Speaker forms are available prior to the start of the meeting. If you wish to address the school board, please complete the form and give it to the clerk by 6.45 p.m. on the day of the meeting. Each individual will have three minutes to speak. At the end of your time, you will hear a buzzer. All comments shall be directed to the school board. Speakers may not yield their time to another. Speakers should address the school board with decorum on policy issues. Comments shall relate to agenda items or matters germane to the business or duties of the school board. Speakers comment on individuals at their own risk of violating confidentiality laws and are defaming the subjects of their comments. <clears throat> Neither the school board, the superintendent, nor the school administration will respond publicly to any comments by speakers about individuals. Presentation of resolutions, declarations, proclamations, manifestos, awards, or other similar documents not originated under the auspices of the school board or administration is prohibited during the public comment period. The audience is asked to be respectful of all speakers. Public comment is the school board's opportunity to listen to the speaker. Since our purpose is to hear from you, the board will not engage in dialogue with the audience or whomever is at the podium. Matters requiring a response will be directed to the superintendent for research and response. The superintendent may report back on such matters at a subsequent business meeting session as appropriate. The school board carefully considers your comments as we decide matters that are brought before us. We appreciate your attendance and your input. All right, thank you, Ms. Bowers. And first up, we have Mr. <coughs> David Dietrich. Good evening, Chairman Mason, members of the school board, Superintendent Smith. My name is David Dietrich, 139 Wilderness Road. Mm -hmm. First of all, um, looking at the uh, website for the school board, I'd like to know why academic excellence isn't one of your goals, your five stated goals on your website. Don't you think that's the most important thing for any school system? How can your focus be so uh, distracted from that target? Do you simply leave the education to the superintendent? I think there needs to be further oversight there. Next, uh, I'd like to thank Dr. Smith for uh, pro publicly uh, claiming, uh, proclaiming uh, at the last meeting that CRT is not being taught in our school system, uh, but I, st I still think it's an area that needs uh, continuous scrutiny. i also like to thank Dr. Smith for making uh, that claim in writing to me, uh, so that's, uh, that uh, really um, makes it a lot stronger statement. Uh, next, uh, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Smith for um, uh, clarifying the national and state testing regimes. Uh, I think um, perhaps uh, shouldn't uh, Hampton schools uh, be more interested in uh, improving the national standards as well as their own standards? And shouldn't, uh, regarding state testing, shouldn't uh, Hampton schools be mapped to the proficiency level of national standards rather than just the basic standards? Wouldn't that raise your standards to a higher level? Finally, is uh, Hampton City Schools uh, using critical gender theory to guide its curriculum? 
Are school administrators and teachers pushing aberrant behavior? Uh, do they hide specific behaviors, incidents from their, the parents of the, t of the students? Does Hampton City Schools work with the Pride Liberation Movement? Do you support the recent walkout in York County schools and other schools around the state? Uh, to follow up on those questions, I'd like to provide a prescient quote from Vladimir Putin from last Friday. Sometimes it takes a, a real tyrant to, make, uh, to reveal the truth of the matter. Rever referring to the debauchery of the United States and other Western countries, do we want to have here in our country, in Russia, <laughs> instead of mom and dad, there were, was parent number one, number two, number three? Are they completely crazy already there? Do we really want perversions that lead to degradation and extinction to be imposed on children in our schools from the primary grades? To be drummed into them that there are supposedly other genders besides women and men? And to be offered a sex change operation? Do we want all this for our country and our children? For, all the, for us, all this is unacceptable. This is a challenge for everyone, such a complete denial of man, the overthrow of faith and traditional values, the suppression of freedom acquires the features of a re reverse religion, outright Satanism. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus Christ announced the false prophets, says, by their fruits, we will know them. You will know them. Thank you very much. Thank you. And next up, we have our delegate, A.C. Cardoza. And thank you again for joining us this evening, Mr. Cardoza. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Mason, Ms. Cherry, Vice Chair Cherry, uh, and members of the school board, thank you so much for having me. Uh, I'm here for just a brief, brief bit of information. Well, first, I wanted to say thank you to your staff. The staff has, is excellent. The numbers that we've seen today were absolutely incredible, and I also was floored to find out that we were able to, to get 100% in any category of graduation is exceptional. So thank, I, I thank the staff. Uh, but also, I'm really here to just announce that, as, as I did before, I said there will be an office, and when that office came open, I would tell you guys where that was. Uh, so my office is open. It's at 102 Pratt Street on Fort Monroe. As we have seen, Fort Monroe has been a, the subject of a lot of tonight's uh, presentations. Uh, so that's 102 Pratt Street, Fort Monroe, Virginia, 23651. Uh, and uh, my office is open uh, Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And Friday from 12 p.m. to 7 p.m. for those who want to visit after work. Um, and if you guys have any, any questions for me, any concerns, any constituent concerns, please feel free to reach out to my office at 757-751-0929. Or send an email to Dell AC Cordoza at house.virginia.gov. Um, and I think that'll do it. Uh, oh, oh, I would like to say that the dual enrollment was excellent. I wish that was around when I went through Hampton, Hampton High and uh, on the Thomas, well, what was Thomas Nelson before, when I graduated from there and on to Behold the Green and Gold. As you know, I love to say every time. I am uh, in front of the mic and I get the chance. So thank you guys so much and please feel free to reach out to me if you have any concerns. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. So next up on the agenda is items for information. All right. I just want to point out that Hampton City Schools policies are available to the public online at the website hampton.k12.va.us and hard copies are available for viewing at the School Administrative Center. All right, our next meeting, we will have a work session on October the 19th at 6.30 at the Rupert Sargent Building and our next regular meeting will be held at 6.30 on November the 2nd right here at Jones Magnet Middle School. We will also have our Community Priorities Workshop on November 10th, but we will let you know where the location is going to be. It's to be determined right now. And then also, I want to inform the community that we are moving our December meeting from December 7th um, to December 14th. So please mark that on your calendar because it, that, you know, we used to that first Wednesday. And so it will happen the second Wednesday. All right. All right so 9.04, items for information. I'll start with Dr. Smith. No additional um, information from the superintendent, and I will follow up um, uh, with regards to comments uh, as appropriate. Okay. In writing. All right. 
Thank you so much, Dr. Smith. All right. Board members, any any uh, comments? Uh, uh, any items for information board, from board members? Okay. All right. Nothing. Okay. All right. Dr. Smith, I'll let you come back. And sure. If, if I may, uh, just for the viewing audience and also for everyone present, that uh, to remind um, our viewing audience that we will have a mental um, wealth fair uh, mm -hmm. that will take place at the convention center, and it is scheduled for October the 17th. And so you can go to um, our homepage and find additional information, but we would certainly encourage our young people and families, we look forward to your participation and lots of wonderful activities uh, planned uh, through the social work department and we will have greetings extended by our school board chair and, and so we really look forward to a clear focus on uh, what our social work department has framed as mental wealth fair. So please mm -hmm. come and uh, join us for uh, that particular mm -hmm. event. We look forward to it. And uh, mm -hmm. it is a part of uh, the focus that we have in terms of um, focusing on um, the climate and the culture within our buildings, but also social and emotional learning as a part of that as well. So thank you. Uh, Ms. Hatcher, anything else that I need to say uh, just uh, in terms of you know, if you'll come forward and give the time, please? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. excited and there's no registration no cost um, there'll be food there'll be games so please come and um, students uh, do need to come with their parents because this is for um, families this is really targeting our families mm -hmm. and um, students in the elementary school should receive a ticket you don't have to have that ticket it's just a reminder put it up on your fridge so that you can join us on mm -hmm. the 17th so and the, and the time um, the time, and that's a good question, Dr. Smith. I do not know the time off the top of my head. That's okay. We'll, we'll go to the website. I, <laughs> it, I, believe I don't want to give six, the incorrect. I believe it's 6 o'clock. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Goral. Ms. Afonja has five, five, I'll be there all day. 5 to 8. 5, five, five to, to 8. eight. Thank, Thank you mm -hmm. for the mm -hmm. flyer. Okay. Thank you. And I just gave my flyer to somebody. So I, was like, <laughs> yeah, I know it's not in my bag. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, Mr. Samuels? I, I just one, uh, I know Ms. Um, Goral sent this notification out to parents. I think the Friday is an early release. And just want to remind parents, Friday is early release. And also, uh, and also we have our, our four, first quarter report um, to um, parents. I believe it went out today. Mm -hmm. So I uh, just want to put that out there. All right. Any other board members? I'll move on to Vicki. Our student member. I just wanted to add that there's also like another upcoming event, which is the regional college fair um, held in Hampton Roads Convention Center on October 26th from 530 to 730. And I'm really grateful that Hampton City Schools is doing this because the exposure, well, I'm going to go to the event and I hope every other high schoolers go because <laughs> I'm excited to see what college are, colleges are there and what they offer. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's October 26th. <laughs> All right, that's good. All right, all right. Anything else from board members? All right, hearing nothing else, then I declare this meeting adjourned.